Welcome back everybody. This is Chris Sussman, otherwise known as the Barbecue Buddha, and I'm here to walk you through how to do a spatchcock turkey that we're gonna brine overnight, and then we're gonna roast it, grill it, however we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it on the big green egg, and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. So today, we're starting out with this delicious Mad Max turkey brine. Mad Max is a rub that comes out every year with Dizzy Pig Barbecue Seasoning Company, and it's a delicious rub. In fact, if you wanna look at one of my previous Thanksgiving turkey posts on my blog, there's one there using the Mad Max rub, but this year they've come up with the Mad Max brine. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this brine, we're gonna get it cooled down, and then I'm gonna spatchcock the turkey. Spatchcock is just taking out the backbone of the turkey, pressing down on the breastplate until you flatten it out, creates a much more even cooking surface. It's a lot of fun, so just stay tuned. We're gonna make the brine, we're gonna spatchcock the turkey, and then we're gonna cook it on the big green egg, and then you will be the hero of your Thanksgiving dinner. So very first thing, we're gonna take this Mad Max turkey and poultry brine. We're just gonna dump this whole thing inside my pot. Now we're gonna add two quarts of water. I can already smell the aromatics and all the, the things that you're used to, all the smells that you're used to for the holiday season. This brine is already impressing me. So I'm gonna take a whisk and just mix that in real quick. Work in all of that flavor. Now we're gonna bring this brine to a quick boil. And once that boils, it will infuse all the flavors, the salt, everything into this brine mixture. We'll mix it with some cold water and then uh, we'll put the turkey in and let that thing brine overnight. It's gonna be about 24 hours. We've got the induction burner going. It should bring this to a boil real quick. Stay tuned and we will get this into the cool water and then we will spatchcock that turkey. Be right back. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes or so. You saw that the brine had come to a boil. It is now nice and mixed in. So what we're going to do is, you gotta cool the brine down because you can't pour a warm brine over a, a raw turkey for obvious reasons. It's gonna cook the bird. You don't wanna cook the bird, that'll be bad. You want it to brine. You want, the reason why you brine a bird is, there's a little bit of science behind it, but essentially, as the salt starts to work its way in to the proteins of the bird through the skin and into the protein of the meat, that will begin to pull in all of the flavor. So the aromatics that is mixed in with the salt solution. At the same time, it, it is the bird is looking to essentially find equilibrium between the salt and the flavors that are coming in and the moisture that's inside the bird until it forms a seal. I'm, I'm describing it in layman's terms, but essentially once they find equilibrium between the salty environment outside, the bird on the inside, it stops, and that's what locks in all that flavor, most importantly, the moisture. Most people ask, does it make the bird salty? Does it make it overly salty? No, it does not. The salt is part of the brining. Some people dry brine. This is called a wet brine. The reason it's called a wet brine is for obvious reasons. I've got two and a half gallons of cold water right here. I've got the two quarts of the brine liquid right here, and we're just gonna pour this in, all right? And there we go. All right, everybody, I'm back. The brine is cooling in the refrigerator. I'm going to go ahead and spatchcock this turkey. We're gonna get it into my brining bucket, pour that brining liquid over it, we're gonna put it in the fridge overnight. Now, make sure that when you buy a turkey to read the ingredients list on the outside. A lot of the frozen turkeys that you'll get at common grocery stores are pre-brined. They may not be pre-brined with a flavor that you like. Most of the pre-brine is just a salt or a sodium solution that they brine or they, they store the turkeys in. 
uh, in other words. So it's not to add flavor, it's not even really to add moisture, it's to preserve the turkeys, but in that case, if you have a bird that is on the, that has been in a sodium solution, has anything other than turkey in the list of ingredients, do not brine it like I'm showing you here because that will be too salty and it will not have a good texture. So make sure you get a fresh young bird. This is an organic, this is just a young turkey that I happen to pick up at Whole Foods. This is a 13 and a half pound turkey. So that'll give you a good estimate as to what we are doing here as far as what size bird you have. I think the Mad Max brine that I just made will fit up to a 30 pound bird. I guess maybe two of these, but we're going with a 16 pound or a 13 and a half pound bird that I just told you about. So let's go ahead and get this batch cocked up. So this bird is already prepped for uh, roasting. You can see that Whole Foods or whomever the manufacturer of this is already put some of the skin around the legs. We're gonna get rid of that because remember, we're gonna spatchcock this bird and spatchcocking is a really cool way to get your bird cooked evenly because what happens is when it's all flat, the breast meat, the thigh meat, and the leg meat, and the wing meat are all on the same level playing field. So the, the, the thinking here is you cook it at an even surface so that it cooks at an even temperature internally uh, because it's getting bathed in the same type of heat in, in the same environment. All right, so we've got this bird. First thing we're gonna do is flip it over. And to make it easy, I am going to take off the tailbone. I've got these kitchen shears right here. These kitchen shears from OXO are extremely useful. Helps you cut right through the bird. So as with anything else, as you're trimming off the turkey, you can put the, the little pieces in a side bowl and you could use that for stock and or your gravy. All right, so here we go. You see the backbone is right along here. So I am going to flip this bird around so I could do it. And you just wanna follow that backbone right up. There we go, Pete. Just like that, the turkey backbone has been removed. I'm gonna set this to the side. All right, now the fun part isn't over yet. So now we've got the backbone removed, you can see that, but we need to flatten the bird out, as I talked to you about earlier. Flattening bird out allows it to cook evenly. That's the theory anyway. So what we wanna do here is we wanna hear that pop. You basically want to break that breastbone. There we go. See that pop? Now, and ladies and gentlemen, you have a spatchcock turkey. See? That's how it's supposed to look. Nice and flat. It's going to grill on an even flat surface on the big green egg tomorrow. And that's, that's how it's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bird in my brining bucket, put it breast side down, there you go, you can see inside the brining bucket right there. The Mad Max brine, I boiled it, I mixed it with cold water and I put it in the fridge. So now it is cool to the touch, it won't cook the turkey. It's gonna brine this thing overnight. So let's gently pour this in. There we have the brine turkey. I'm going to cover this up and we are going to get it in the refrigerator downstairs. Check back with me tomorrow. Make sure I have a different shirt on. All right, everybody, it's the next day. You can tell I got my hair cut today. I'm not wearing a hat and I have a different shirt on. It's not movie magic, it's what's happening, people. And the reason why it's the next day is right here. My turkey brine bucket has been brining overnight. I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this bucket, I'm gonna drain it off in the sink a little bit so it's less of a mess right here. So uh, I don't have a cameraman following me around, so just bear with me while I get rid of this in the sink. All right, 
So this turkey has brined overnight in that Mad Max brine, and you already could see that it's taken on a lot of those properties. And we're gonna go ahead and take some of these paper towels and just dry the outside of the bird down. We're gonna apply a rub to this beautifully spatchcocked turkey. And I wanna try to get the surface area as dry as possible before I do just that. Now I'm gonna use one of my favorite rubs. I would use the Mad Max rub, but I want a little bit of different. I've got the aromatics and the flavors imbued into this turkey through that Mad Max brine. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite rubs from Dizzy Pig, Tsunami Spin. It is what put them on the championship board so many times with their barbecue competition chicken. So I figured if it goes great with chicken, it's gonna go even better with a big bird like turkey. So here we go. The turkey's already wet, so you don't need to put on a binder. Let's let this rest at room temperature for a little bit. Come on outside while I start up the big green egg and we'll get this beautiful spatchcock turkey on. I'm expecting it to be about two and a half to three hours. Stick with me and you'll see how this turns out. All right, everybody. So the big green egg is, it, we're showing a dome temp of 250. I've got a probe temp in here, it's 275. That's what you want, about 250, 275. I've got pecan wood inside here. We're just gonna lay this turkey nice and flat on this surface, just like that. That's why you call it a spatchcock turkey, people. Look at it. The breast is even with the legs. They're all even. We're gonna let this thing roast for about an hour, get some nice smoke flavor, and I'm gonna come back up, crank up the heat. I'll start basting the outside with butter and herb butter mixture I'm gonna make. It's gonna be delicious. Happy Thanksgiving, the barbecue Buddha, out. All right, so it's been about an hour at 275. We're gonna check in on this bird. I'm gonna start glazing it with a little bit of that butter and fresh English thyme from the garden. You can see the color starting to form. The bird is looking good. Let's go ahead and get some butter on this beautiful, gorgeous turkey. This butter will really help the turkey develop that golden, beautiful roasted color that everybody likes to see on their Thanksgiving dinner table. There we go. Let that set. I'm gonna bump up the temperature to about 325 right now. We'll check on you in about 30 minutes. All right, everybody, we're back been about two hours and 15 minutes. I bumped the temperature up to 350 for the last 35, 45 minutes of the cook just to try to get the skin a little brown. Let's take a look and see how the spatchcock turkey is coming along. Skin is split here a little bit, that's okay. Look at how golden brown all of that is. Let's go ahead and take a quick temperature check. You would like to check the breast and the thigh. So we're gonna look at the thigh Thigh is perfect, about 185 degrees. Also, if you could see right there, the juices that are coming out right there, if they run clear, that's how you grill by feel. If you, if you poke the turkey and the juices run clear, then you know you're good. I was gonna lose that, didn't you? All right, let's bring this sweet baby inside. See you there. All right, everybody. So you saw me from start to finish. We took out the backbone of this turkey. We made the brine with Dizzy Pig Mad Max brine. We put this in a bucket with that brine overnight. Today, I took it out, I dried it off, I rubbed it with Dizzy Pig Tsunami Spin. Then I cooked it for the first hour using pecan wood chips on my big green egg at 275. Then I bumped the temp up to 350 for about an hour and 15 more minutes. The turkey is all done. This looks beautiful. This is a gorgeous bird. The, 
the flatness of it makes it uh, the presentation a little different from your traditional holiday presentation on the table, but it doesn't matter because we're going to carve it up. I'm going to get a Buddha bite and you are going to be the master of the spatchcock turkey for your next holiday meal. So let's go ahead and take a look at this beautiful bird. Let's separate the legs first. Big turkey leg. All right, so we did a spatchcock turkey from start to finish. I just carved most of this turkey up. It's a beautiful presentation for your holiday meal. Spatchcock turkey, it's delicious. I'm gonna carve the rest of this up, but you're not gonna have to watch me, but what you will watch me is do my famous Buddha bite. I can't wait to try this brined turkey breast, smoked and grilled and roasted on my big green egg. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like what you've seen today, hit the subscribe button over here. Leave me a comment down below. Send me a message. I look forward to seeing all of you very soon. Until then, cook something good for me.